We were honored, flabbergasted, frankly, when he agreed to come on the set and help Lena Horne uh, with her hairstyling. Sydney was the head of the hairdressing department, and when they brought me in, he greeted me and everything, and the hairdresser said to him, we will not touch Miss Horne's hair. And so Sydney said, I will do Miss Horne's hair. And he said, now Miss Horne, do you know a, a lady we can come in to help assist me so that when I'm busy on another set, she will know what I want done and will come and tell me? And I said, yes, I do. And of course she was like me. And Sydney said, bring her in. And he made the union accept her. And from then on, it was, I think it was wonderful of him because he didn't do it just on my account. I feel that he was a man that was very sensitive, knowledgeable, and liked people. Lena Horne is as beautiful today as she was then, and uh, we wanted her in the picture. She was a big part of MGM musicals. I always looked at her films with a bit of sadness because here was a woman who obviously wasn't just a singer. She could have been a great actress and was never really given the opportunity, aside from Cabin in the Sky, to play a role. And it's painful that uh, when her films were shown in the South, the, her numbers would be cut out. Almost every movie that she's in is designed in such a way that her numbers can be excised with, with ease. The same thing happened to the Nicholas brothers. Times have changed since then. Thank heaven. Thank heaven for little girl. I felt that she was dealt a very poor hand in Hollywood. <laughs> After a while, I would read in the paper that I should have been more grateful because they did permit me to sit in the commissary. 